Jack Foley, and my guest once again is the remarkable architect Eugene Sway, and that's spelled T-S-U-I, or in some places T-S-S-U-I. You will find the name spelled both ways in different contexts. And I brought him back because there's no way that we could have covered anything like what Eugene Sway is about uh, in a half hour. And in fact, this half hour won't cover it either, but we're going to do a little more than we did. There are many ways in which we can approach this wonderful and interesting and futuristic architect, athlete, musician. I haven't covered it all. But I thought, perhaps to begin, people don't know that he's a poet. And he is. And he's written a poem called Flamenco. Eugene, give it to us. What now the quick rasp of strum that tears at the heart and fills the darkness like crashing waves upon a sea cave? Grasping for that sadness only the soul remembers, washed ashore in the sea of hope. Si, senor, calls the magician looking up to command the stars, stabbing with light, light as the pulse stabs at me. Dark eyes pierce the fire. The ritual dance sets the world upside down. To sing, to sing, to whirl and bleed, never to look behind at the black corridors of the dead life. Raise high the firebrand to release the air from lungs that gasp for the deep song to console the lofty clouds. Six strings on a coffin with a black hole. From out comes the voice, the cry of wretched song, of life, of blood turned white by tragedy. Aye, there is only song. When the heart aches, and this moment in time breaks the mind in two between earth and heaven. What now, the quick rasp of strum? That tears what at the now, heart the quick and fills the darkness strong, like crashing waves upon a sea cave. And fills the grasping for that like sadness only the soul remembers. Grasping the shore in the sea. Only the soul remembers. See, Senor, calls the magician looking up. See, Senor, stars stabbing with light as the pulse stabs. Stabbing with light as the pulse Dark eyes pierce the fire. The ritual dance sets the world upside down. The world upside to sing, down. To see, to see, to whirl to and sing, bleed. To whirl never and to look bleed. behind never at, the to look behind at the black corridors, of the, corridors of the dead life. Raise high the firebrand to, fire to release the air from lungs that from gasp lungs for the deep song to console the lofty clouds. Six strings on a coffin Six with a black hole. With a black from out hole. comes the voice, from the cry of wretched song of life, of life, of blood of turned blood white turned by, by tragedy. tragedy. Ay, there is only song Aye, when the heart only song aches. When the heart and this moment in time moment breaks, in the, time mind breaks the mind in two between, between earth and heaven. heaven. Thank you, Eugene. And that was a poem called Flamenco, and we were trying to get something of the feeling of what it's like to experience flamenco. What is your experience of flamenco? Now, I know you play. Yes, I play the flamenco guitar, and I have danced. I was a, uh, the principal dancer in the Minneapolis Flamenco Dance Troupe in the 70s. Wow, can yes. you still... Uh... Oh, I can, yeah, if I had given a little practice, I and could... A pair of uh, heels. Yeah, I, yeah, a pair of heels, I, I think, yeah, I could, I could do it again. Uh, but flamenco, uh, the, the, the spirit of flamenco is, is the spirit of, of defiance, of, of the, the resistance against prejudice, against, against uh, discrimination, against uh, the, the, the overbearing social prejudices that many people have all around the world. And flamenco, the word comes from the Moorish two words, meaning falag, meaning... Um, uh, 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 oh God, what is it? Uh, uh, mango is is uh, peasant. Falag is fugitive. 
The oh. two words mean fugitive peasant. Oh, wow. I yes. thought it had something to do with flame. No, 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 it doesn't at all. It means fugitive peasant, and that gives you the key to the kind of prejudicial discrimination and, and, and social ostracism that the gypsies had. Because people in, in, in those centuries ago that had no place to live, those people were considered outcasts from society. I'm just calling them gypsies, right? Egy yes, they ain't yes. Egyptians, yes, you know, which is yes, why, yes, yes. Romany so people. Flam yes, so flamenco came from that, that pain. And, and the music is about pain. It's, it's about, uh, about all the emotions that of, of, of uh, disappointment, of, of uh, fear, of, of pain and suffering. Let's talk and about that's what I love about flamenco, because my life has come from <laughs> that kind of, you know, when I was expelled, you know, expelled from two schools, of, of, uh, demeaned as, as a student, as even as an architect, you know, like called uh, crazy, some visionary, uh, 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 a man that, that uh, is right, creating... We'll, build. we'll get to all of that. Okay, yes, we want to yes. get to all of so that. that. So that spirit, that, that outcast spirit, is really something that's very deeply ingrained in my psyche and my personality. It's a and that's why I was attracted to flamenco. There's a famous story about Beethoven when um, a violinist came to him and complained about a part in, uh, that Beethoven had written for the violin. He said, I can't play this, it's too hard. And Beethoven said, when the spirit spoke to me, do you think I was thinking of your wretched fiddle? <laughs> and now, uh, um, as an architect, one of the things you have to do all the time is to think of that wretched fiddle. And I think part of what uh, the, uh, the feeling that people had about your work, and you, you have been both enormously praised and enormously vilified, and all of that came out, I think, in your reading of that poem and in what you're feeling about flamenco and the poem. But those, those things, it seemed to me, um, have to do with the very fact that people often feel threatened. Everybody says, oh, I want the new. Everybody says, I want creativity. And then when they actually see it, they say, I don't want that! <laughs> you know, et cetera. Exactly. Because they feel threatened by that. Yes, yes. And well, well, that's been the story of your architectural life. Yes. You were thrown out not because you were a bad architect, but because the your ideas didn't jive with anything that people were teaching in the schools that, uh, that you went to. Entirely correct. It had nothing to do with grades. My guy was a straight A student, and in fact, uh, it had to do really with an attitude. And the attitude was that I thought that the architect was a creative. Um, artisan of society was 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 the the leader was the person who led uh, our culture to greater and more meaningful things. The arche, the yes, first, yes. the one at the base, yes, yes the exactly. highest, the, the, the highest, leader. Yes, 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 the master builder. Yes, yes, and exactly. tech means the, to, the, the, the ability to build. Yes, yes. technique, um, the maker, the yeah, maker. the master maker. Yes, yes, and so. I, I was uh, uh, studying based on that that conception. Absolutely. And yet the t the, the teachers and the the university at large, no, oh no, no, no. The architect is a is a puppet of society. Is a representative of the of the the uh, the conser the conservative and accepted the accepted aspects of culture. It's a business. Yes. And you're expected to learn the business yes. and do the business as people do a business, yes. and which is a very unfortunate thing to say to Eugene yeah, Sway. But, but also, university, the, the name itself means to, be, to come from the universal, the ideas that are universal. And I thought that the university upheld those, those uh, accepted, uh, uh, meaningful thoughts, but it didn't. Well, it, university it was, is one turn. Well, I'll turn around the sun, yes. and it's only one turn. It's not a multiversity, yes. and a multiversity would be closer to the kind of ideas that you have. Universe is such an interesting word, and it's something that you've talked about. And one of the things that I think that is interesting about your work. Now, you talk about nature being the basis of your architecture, which indeed it is. There's a wonderful house that's on Matthew Street in Berkeley uh, that is commonly called the Fish House, which is been based upon the tardigrade, which is a tiny, um, can't be seen by the naked eye, creature who is extraordinarily indestructible. Yes, in fact, the, the only one that, the only creature in existence that's ever survived outer space 
was recently uh, 20 of them were actually put into outer space, and they were they left they were left there for 10 days, and, and then no they're brought problem. back in. Uh, they're given a little bit of water, and they walked away. Okay, but the thing is that what interests me is this: um, that word nature, which is the basis of your work. You wrote this in a wonderful book, Evolutionary Architecture. If the universe is a system at all, it is alive with the exchange of information, energy, and matter, depending on the immediate responses of existing things. To attempt to understand this in mechanistic terms is futile. What is being suggested is that the universe, in reality, is not orderly, stable, and at equilibrium, but is instead raging and foaming with change, disorder an evolutionary process. The universe is continually fluctuating, and through this fluctuation, it begins to divide and differentiate in a direction that is impossible to determine. One of the beautiful results of this discovery is that at any time during this evolutionary process, disorganization suddenly becomes organized. Now, most people think of nature as being out there and static and something to be looked at, doesn't move much, maybe it changes over centuries, etc. Your nature is, in effect, the same as the creative mind. <laughs> what you're describing here in this yes. description of nature yes. is essentially the same, so that the creative mind, in a certain sense, is nature. That's a great insight. Yes, yes it is. The creative mind is, yes, because it's always, it's always searching, always searching, always questioning for what could be, and also for what what is, what are the multiple dimensions of what is, because oftentimes what we see is not what it is, the reality. And so we have to look deeper into any phenomenon, any organism, any anything, to see what it is that made that thing the way it is. Yes. And that is, that, that questioning is the basis of the, the, the spirit of nature, the spirit of, of creation, is, is the, the, that, that whole commitment to find out what is the, the, the root core of that thing. What is the nature of that thing? Uh, that One of the things that's interesting, uh, Kyung Lee made a very fine film about you. There have been other films, etc. Her, her film is particularly good. It's called Telos, The Fantastic World of Eugene Sway. And um, that's, I hope, seeable in many more places. We, I've seen it and at the Green Festival in San Francisco. But one of the things we see you doing, you're looking around a landscape and you're seeing the things in that landscape that are particularly there. And you ask the question, well, why are these things here? What is their nature? Why did they grow up in this place, in this way? They're not all over the place. We don't see these, these little plants. They're not necessarily a couple of miles away. Yeah. They are here. And how can we also respond to this landscape with the architecture in the same way that these plants did? That we adjust ourselves. And yes, we're going to be creative. Yes, we're going to do all kinds of things. But at the same time, we're continually responding to something that is outside ourselves, too. And allowing ourselves to respond to a landscape that is already there and has been there before us. Yes. And, you, and we're creating a relationship with that landscape, Absolutely. with those living organisms, with the, with the whole process of life that is in that place. And that's what I want to try to understand. What are the forces that come together in that particular place that I can learn about and utilize in a environment, in a human environment? And so that, so that I'm working with nature, with the, with this, with the same processes, the same forces that are particular, peculiar to that site, that create, can create something marvelously different, marvelously unique, but very appropriate for the area. Now, you're working with nature and striving, and that's the basis of your architecture, which you call evolutionary architecture, because you want it to have that kind to of... To evolve, quality. yes. Yes, and, and in fact, there's motion all over the place in your building. In some yes. cases, the, uh, the ceiling... The roof moves. Yes. I mean, as, as Galileo said, but it moves. <laughs> and so does your roof. You can see the stars. And, and there are many ways in which your innovative architecture has functioned in that way. Now, if your architecture is rooted in nature, what is the root 
of the architecture that we see all around us. Where does uh, that come from? Yes, well, that comes that comes from the buying and selling, and the really it comes from the buying and selling of architecture as a commodity, and and that uh, and that. Now what's the basis of the box? Where does that come from? Um, I think it comes way back thousands of years ago when when humanity started to build according to their uh, their own way of thinking, uh, the, the ruler, the, the the measuring system. We started to put a system, our own system, so on the nature. We developed straight lines. Yes, it's a straight line. A straight line does not exist in nature. That's right. And so we, we asserted ourselves, we, we really asserted ourselves, our, our ego, onto nature, and then uh, uh, and it became a kind of overbearing presence. And we used that for time memorial. It's absurd to say that anything about conquering nature because we are nature. Yes, we just are. Just as nature. much as the trees and everything else yes, around us yes. is, is nature, so that we'd be conquering ourselves. That's ridiculous. That's right, right. We are asserting our own ego onto nature uh, through our own measurements, through our own uh, science and technology. Uh, material use, all of those things. So the straight so, line results in box-like structures, yes. which are not necessarily the most flexible kinds of structures that exist, as you point out. Yes, was the, the, the straight line is the, is the line of, you might say, of death, because it, it, it's immovable. It is the, 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 sh the short way between two points, is the quick way between two points, and it, it is inflexible. And so we are creating a kind of checkerboard universe onto nature, whereas when, but in actuality, nature is heaving and moving and changing. And so we have, we have asserted this checkerboard onto itself, and we, we believe that the whole universe is that way. But Einstein proved that, that the Once universe itself, all, equals yes, that, yeah. that, the, that, that the universe itself is heaving and, and changing and, and, uh, and moving like, like the sea, like the ocean. Yes. There's oceans of space. Yes. And we should, we should uh, redefine the way reality actually is uh, by creating this kind of changing, ever-changing system. Of, of the universe. So, that's so what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to find out what is the, the nature of that system and then to design according to the reality, the truth of what, how that system works. So that the, the structure of the great cities that we see around us is a structure of death. Yes, it's it a is. Structure of and in lines. fact, it is lethal because when you put disaster forces on that structure, let's say tsunamis, uh, earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever it might be, those structures break apart and hundreds of thousands of people are killed every year because of that. So we are, we are actually propagating a system of death, of, of, of lethal structure that is proven through thousands of years of, of obvious example to be lethal to people. And Actually, we need to, we yeah, need to change that, that vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I've been in one of your houses, um, one of the houses designed by you. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was the Fish House on Matthews uh, Street in Berkeley, and, and, and you've built other things. Um, you're longer on design than you are on actual buildings, but that seems to be you know, part and parcel of the way in which you operate, partly because of... The very well, I difference. tend to change that. Oh, of course, very, let's yes. hope so. Hey, folks out there, you need a house? <laughs> we well, not just houses, but uh, you know, larger buildings, uh, 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 high rise sk skyscrapers, uh, institutional buildings, laboratories, schools in particular. Oh, of course, we should mention the, the, uh, the school in Napa Valley, mm -hmm. which is the health school, the Watsu Center Health School. Which you designed. Yes. Uh, so, and, and that was designed, that design was actually. Uh, hinted at from the organisms on that site, the the oak galls, the, mm -hmm. the spherical oak galls, and the uh, the the moths and butterflies of the site, the uh, the the different kinds of insects and animals that were uh, that were peculiar to that site alone. But in the fish house where I've been, I haven't been to the Harbin, uh, Hot Springs building. I want to see it, and I'll make a trek. But um, in the fish house. One of the things that one discovers is the comfort of circular, linear, circular lines, circular, linear 
curvilinear. Uh, curvilinear, yes. thank yes. you. Um, uh, uh, lines. And they are comforting in a certain way. They remind you of feminine spaces. They remind you of, we've talked about this, they remind you of womb, etc. And it's a very comfortable feeling that one of the things that happens in these spaces is, yes, we feel at home there. We're not natural creatures. We feel at home in these curved spaces, in these movements. Uh, th there are many movements that are happening within in a fairly small space, but many movements, including uh, there's no upstairs, there's an well, up ramp yes. in that place, well, which is another curve. Yeah, well, the building is an extension of the, the vocabulary of our bodies. You know, our bodies are, are uh, intricate uh, organisms of curves. Our skin, our bones, our muscles, our sinews, all are curved. Why? Because there's a particular reason for that. And that has to do with efficiency, it has to do with being light and strong, it has to do with adaptation of forces. Uh, all of these things are intrinsic to our body. And so that, that building is just an extension of the same vocabulary that was used to design our bodies. Mm -hmm. So of course we feel a kind of kinship to that space because it's the same, it's the same vocabulary. Absolutely. It's the same language that Absolutely. our bodies are created from. Absolutely. And, and so why is it that other, there are not more buildings like that around us in the world? Because here we have our own, uh, our own physical vocabulary. That, have, that we have used, that, 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 uh, that nature has given us for, for millions and millions of years, and yet we don't use that vocabulary. We don't apply it. And so we that don't is... Say, we don't say stand up curved. We say stand up straight. Yes. And that seems to me of some, some interest. And it, it also <clears throat> may have something to do with the patrilinear uh, culture as well, because um, uh, these are erections. Uh, these buildings, uh, uh, which is a straight line. The one thing, it seems to me, um, that people don't understand about an erection, a genuine erection, is that it's a bridge. It's not a weapon. People tend to think of, this is my rifle, this is my gun, this is for fighting, this is for fun. Yeah. People tend to think of, uh, in, a, in a warlike culture like ours, mm -hmm. a culture that defines almost everything in terms of warriors, uh, people tend to think of, uh, of, of sexual activity mm. as being a sort of war, the war of the sexes, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it seems to me it's closer to being a bridge. The whole point of, uh, of an erection for a man is, go over there! Mm -hmm. That's the direction you should <laughs> be going. It's not something to attack with. Well, it's something you want to, uh, to give to someone. Well, well, the structure of our environment is that bridge. It's a bridge between humanity and nature. And you've done an interesting bridge, actually. Uh, bridge oh, yes, the, the, the Gibraltar, Strait of Gibraltar floating bridge. Yes. yes. That's, uh, yes that, a that bridge which is in motion. Yes, is in motion, and it, in fact it utilizes the natural forces of the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. And, uh, uh, and also connects two whole continents together so that there's uh, a chance to exchange their cultural uh, thinking, their, their, uh, their arts, their, their, uh, their engineering ideas, their, all of these social, uh, social peculiarities of their culture can then be shared. And so that that bridge was an attempt to do that, and I think that it what is about really the ultimate the, tower as well. Yeah, well, that too. Uh, but uh, the, the the bridge I wanted to to mention that that it's it's the only solution to connecting those two continents because these the, the ocean is a mile deep there. That's the shortest distance between the two the two uh, continents is a mile deep. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to create. A, uh, a, a, uh, a bridge like we consider, you know, with, with, with uh, pylons and, yes, and like the, the, the Bay usual, bridge. like the Bay Bridge, yes. So we have to float. And, and, the, and the key is to be in tension. Just like our sinews, our muscles, our, our bodies, our, every living organism is in tension. Mm -hmm. That is the key that nature has given us to creating living structure. And so that bridge is using the same universal principle that nature is using to create living organisms. A balance of forces which are always in motion. That's right. And so the Ultima Tower is the same intention structural system that's being used by it's the floating vertical bridge. vertical rather than it's horizontal. Ver it's, yes, it's vertical 
And it's in tension that the core is based on a what I call a tenspression structure. It's, a, it's small, short pieces of, of uh, uh, lightweight metal that are tied together by cables. And that creates a very lightweight, like a spine. It creates a kind of a living spine that goes up two miles. And so from that spine, the building is hanging from that spine. So all the floors up to the two miles high are all suspended from that kind of maypole tension structure. And what if what if there's an earthquake or something like that? If there's that? an earthquake, it, it strong adapts. Winds, all yeah, of strong that. winds, it adapts, it it shifts the forces around itself, just like our body. So when we're pushed by wind, we 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 can uh, adapt to those forces by 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 standing into the wind, by turning sideways, by by shifting direct force around our bodies, so that our so that we dissipate the the disaster forces that that push onto our structure. And we think, and you think all the time, not of a building as a dead thing, as dead material. But as a living thing. That's right. That we, when we, in order to survive these forces that that play on us all all day, uh, depending on where we are on the planet, we have to think of structure. We have to make the jump from structure as a static uh, system to a moving, uh, adapting, dissipating system, and and that new language language is what we have to create in order to to work like nature works, to, to find solutions to, to archaic and age-old problems that have plagued us for millions of years, and which up to now, we still don't have solutions to. Yes, I think that, that uh, where I come into all of this, which strikes me as uh, most interesting, I, I'm immediately attracted to your buildings and to your ideas, etc., and it seems to me that we need to re-understand mind as a multiplicity of forces, and uh, which it is, uh, you know, and uh, I go around saying as much as I possibly can that, that the great uh, perception of the uh, late and not so lamented 20th century was that some parts of the mind don't know what other parts of the mind are doing. That the the mind is a multiplicity of forces. That's precisely what you think of as architecture, yes. a multiplicity of forces which are always exchanging information That's right. with one another. Yes, in fact it's a way of thinking, it's, a, it's what I call an interdisciplinary way of thinking, that you're thinking in multiple dimensions simultaneously, and that you're able to, to retranslate, to transcribe ideas from one venue to another. For instance, um, I'm also a musician, so when I compose a piece of music, you know, the music has rhythm, it has, uh, it has uh, a minor and major theme, it has all kinds of uh, structural accents. and, yeah, and What we call and, architectonics. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And so those ideas can be, a, can be a directly applied to architecture, except that now the venue is three-dimensional space and structure and form and materials. So it's just a, a different language, but the same universal principles apply to both. Everything, so, yes. everything in, in nature and everything in your thinking is chordal. It has <laughs> many aspects. That's right, uh, it's Eugene, multidimensional. Eugene Sway, T-S-U-I, T-S-S-U-I. Uh, thank you so much. There's always lots to talk to you about. And this is just a little hint. And what is your website? The uh, website, there's, there's several. Uh, the prominent ones are eugenesway.com or uh, tdrinc.com. Dot com as well. Uh, but there, there are many, you know, movies. Look them up on, yeah. look them up on Google. Yes. Thank Almost, you. Yeah. Thank you, you, Eugene. Um, we'll be much. back with, uh, with more at another time. It's just. Oh yes. We've impossible. Only, yes. We've only touched this, the surface of, of the important aspects of what we should be talking about. Multiplicity. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you.